to do the lip syncing action that we're going to work with, we do have the handout on Detour and you can go read through that. A uh, key thing that it's talking about is we have these different mouth sounds. So we refer to these as the different phonemes that make up the mouth shapes that are used for language. So one of the common misconceptions when you're working with lip syncing is you assume that we have 26 letters in the alphabet, so I need 26 mouth shapes to animate. But that is not the case. Instead, all we really need are um, eight different mouth shapes to generate most standard lip sync animations. We can create a few extra mouth shapes for some other sounds. But what we are doing is we're doing the phonetic sounds. This is why we can go watch really funny YouTube videos. There's a web uh, YouTube channel called Bad Lip Reading where they take all of these other videos of politicians and sports figures, uh, football players and people like that, and they take the video and they redo the dialogue based on the phonetic shape that their mouth is making, not the actual sound that came out. So they're able to reconstruct the dialogue and it's really, really fun to watch. And it's great when, you know, it's a political party of, you know, that you're in opposition to when you watch them being badly lip read. It's just that much funnier. Um, but what it is is we have these different mouth shapes that describe the sounds. So I've compiled a couple different resources from a couple of different animation uh, resources of different mouth shapes. So we have these frontal, here's frontal and profile for the different sounds. Here's another collection of the mouth shapes with corresponding letters attached to them. Now these letters, these eight letters as we see them designated on the little guy with the tie shaped head, those letters correspond to a specific mouth shape as defined in this list here where the A mouth is going to be for the M, B, P, and H sounds. So if you make an M sound, a M or a B, you realize your lips and jaw and everything are taking on the same shape. And it's because our mouth is doing the same shape that we're able to then line things up. So in the second handout, animation mouths have attached those letter designations to the sound. So the MBPs, the lips are closed and tight. The B mouth is going to be for the consonant sounds. So if you make a C sound or a D, C, D, G, K, you realize you don't even have to change your mouth to cycle through every one of those letters because it's the same phonetic shape necessary to produce that sound. C, the mouth is going to be open a little bit more when we uh, are making an E sound. A, the jaw drops down because now you're changing the mouth. You're making it a little more rounded in appearance, which is different than the O sound where then you pull the lips together. The O sound where then you tighten the lips together but you still have more of the rounded mouth. Now the F and V, you're biting down on your lower lip. Your upper teeth are biting onto that. So if you make these sounds right now, and you don't have to be embarrassed, you have all, if everybody's doing it at the same time, there's no embarrassment because we're all doing the same silly behaviors, or you realize this part of animation is something you really want to do privately so you don't have people staring at you when you're making weird sounds. But you can mouth the sound without saying the sound and study what shape your face makes. That's where you hop into photo booth and decide you're saying a word, well what is the phonetic syllable that you're using, not the letters. We don't care what the letter is, what is the sound? When we figure out that sound, then we make that appropriate mouth. Now Animate Pro, the one mouth shape it won't automatically lip sync to is a L or a liquid sound, that L where the tongue is pushing against the back of the top teeth. So when you put the tongue against the back of your top teeth, that's the shape you're doing for the L's or those liquid sounds that la la la. And when you realize that's what's happening, it doesn't automatically do that. You can draw that mouth and then if your dialogue that you are lip syncing to has that sound, then you will manually insert that mouth shape on those few occurrences. And if that's the only thing you have to do to lip sync it manually, that's pretty awesome.
and that's what we're going to discover shortly. So we are going to be working with these seven mouth shapes and then uh, we'll have one more mouth shape and that's our X where we put an X along with it. And that is the neutral sound. That's where the mouth isn't saying anything. When the mouth is closed, it's the new, neutral kind of mouth shape. It's the non-talking mouth. So this afternoon we're going to make eight different mouth shapes. One for the MBPH sounds, one for our consonants, one for the short vowel sound, long vowel sound, then the O, the O, and then our F sound. And then we will end it with X or silence. Typically I start with that one and then I draw my other mouth shape. So I always start with the neutral, the non-talking mouth, and then I draw my other mouths and build that in. Once we've created the mouth shapes, then if we look up here, then we will learn that we have to name them properly. They must be named with capital letters. We can't use lowercase letters if we wanted to automatically map the lip syncing for us. So we will use the capital letters and map it out. We'll learn how to do that. And then we can bring in the sound, choose lip sync, auto lip sync, map the lip sync, choose the mouth layer, done. And it's going to be that straightforward. So the next challenge is we have to go in and construct a head. And then we're going to draw the different mouth shapes that we are going to use for lip syncing this. So the mouth shapes that we need are for the different ones. Now you could kind of mimic the drawings that we have here of the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then we'll have X, which is the non-talking mouth, or which is what I would encourage you to do, is to kind of get a sense of what this is, but then pull up Photo Booth, make the sound, and study what shape your mouth takes. So when you make that kind of sound, where are the corners of your mouth? Where are your lips? Do you see teeth? Upper teeth? Lower teeth? Both? Where's the tongue in the mouth? Is the mouth rounded? Is it spread into a grin? What, what is the shape? Study that. Exaggerate it in a photo booth and then use that knowledge to inform the artwork that you create for this face that you are going to lip sync momentarily. Next step is we are going to lip sync with it. So first off, we're going to need a character or a head. So you need a head layer. You could put the eyes on a separate layer. I would encourage that because we will also explore how to make a character blink. Because when you are talking, it's not uncommon that your eyes are part of the expression and perhaps you want the eyes to be expressive as well. So at a minimum, you'll want a head layer, a mouth layer, and eye layer, or eyes. You could have two because you could make your character have independent eyes. Maybe they wink and not just blink because you're that much of a rock star. I'm just going to set up some color. I have something to work with. So I will have a head layer. mouth and right now I'm just going to have one layer for the eyes.
Now you can put the nose on a separate layer if you want to animate the nose. I'll let you figure that out. With the neutral face, the non-talking face, so if I compare my artwork to my own face staring in photo booth, it's just a neutral face. But if I move into the next mouth shape, the mm, BP sound, mm, we see that the lower lip all but disappears. The corners of the mouth go out. The mouth kind of takes on an almost straight line appearance. Mm, So staring into photo booth is an opportunity, whoa, didn't want that to happen, to start to get a sense of, okay, that is the mouth shape that I want. Now your displays are big enough, you could set photo booth on one side, animate pro on the other, then you could keep it up the whole time and just glance over at it and study what you're doing. I don't have that luxury here, that really diminishing my workspace. So I'm going to go to the mouth layer here. Uh, now, as a precaution, I'm going to lock the eye and the head layer so I don't accidentally draw on those. It's not uncommon to draw your mouth on the wrong layer and then wonder why when you hit lip sync, nothing happens. I've seen that a lot. Okay. Now, what we need to do is we need to extend things out so that we can see it. And with this, we will have our eight different drawings that we'll be working with. So I can extend it out, or I could just extend out to 10 right now, hit F5, it extends it out. Now for my next mouth, I have my base one, I click at frame 2, and then I will say create an empty drawing. So it creates an empty drawing. Now if I turn on onion skinning, it, I can see what the previous mouth was, so I can draw this mouth in the same general location. That's important. Because if I draw my next mouth as I go to work, and if I put that mouth you know, up here, well, things are going to be really wonky and it's not going to work terribly well. So I added an empty drawing, the little Create Empty Drawing button, turn on Onion Skinning so I can see the previous one. Going to Photo Booth, the mmm. So corners of the mouth are going out, not up. Not smiling up, just mmm, mmm. So with that, as we work our way over here, I want the corners of the mouth to go up. Bottom is getting tight. Stretch it out. If we have cheeks going on with our character, we could even put a little tension on the cheeks here. A lot of this is studying what's going on and deciding what's appropriate for your character shape. So now I have my next mouth shape. Now to move into my next mouth, I click to the next frame. And I can click on the Create Empty Drawing. And now this time I only want to really see though the previous drawing. I don't want to see both. I just, this one, to line it up. Now I'm doing the consonant sound, the K, D, G, K, the E. Eh. Sounds. So going back into photo with eh, eh, so the mouth is open, we see the top teeth, eh, and you sound really stupid saying that, but you know, it, it helps. Or you can just kind of think it and try to mouth what it would be. 
Okay, corners of the mouth go up. Teeth are mostly occupying it, not really seen in. Eh, okay, something like that. I know about what I want to do now. So I can grab my brush here and decide, okay, I'll go. Put that there, maybe a little bit of the bottom of the lips. No corner of the mouth. And you can decide how you want to do it. Now, what I find is useful when doing this is not to go through and paint and fill in the teeth, fill in the tongue and all the colors. It's first just draw the lines that I'm going to be working with, the outlines of the different mouth shapes. And then I go back and really do the coloring. So now I have my next mouth shape and it's just going to be repeating that process of trying to study for the different sounds. So then I make an E sound. And notice how the mouth has to open up further. E, E. So we're seeing more of the mouth. Seeing top and bottom teeth. The lips are pulling back, exposing more of the mouth. Now as you decide how you're going to do this, you know, make sure you're working with your character that if they have teeth, you draw the teeth. Well, what kind of teeth do they have? Do they have pointed teeth, shark teeth, bad teeth, pirate teeth, good teeth, Hollywood teeth, all veneers? What do they have? Overly whitened teeth. You get to figure it out as you go and show those teeth. Now, one thing that helps when you're doing this is having reasonable consistency. So as you draw the teeth, there should be consistency from frame to frame so that the teeth look like they came from the same character. Otherwise you get some really weird effects happening when you're animating. So it's important that once you draw the teeth that you reasonably stick to them. Sometimes it's useful to draw the teeth on a separate layer in the beginning just to get a sense of what it is so you have some a guide to trace over or you just carefully line them up and this is where onion skinning can really help out with that too. You should go to draw the teeth. So now I'm just going to work my way through and I will start cycling until I've completed the different mouth shapes. So once you have it together you should have your non-talking mouth and then our M mouth, our consonant mouth, M mouth, Oop. that's my uh, Okay, my order got messed up here. Now, you can, if your library, which is in the top right, by tool properties and color, if you click on library, you can now see each frame should correspond. You should see, so now under two, I'm on two, on three, I'm on three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I end up with the different mouth shapes. Once I'm happy with the shapes, and if you scrub back and forth, and it almost looks like a mouth talking, it doesn't look like it's jumping all over the face, you know it's probably going to be pretty close and should work. Then at this point you can go in and finalize any coloring or other things you want to do, coloring the teeth or the tongue or inside the mouth, and work that out. and then you have color so that you get your teeth, your lips, the back of the throat, the tongue, all of that properly colored. And once you've completed this, you're, you've done the hard part of the process and then it's just going to be a matter of we need to name our drawings, bring in the audio, tell it to lip sync, and call it a day. With your mouths in, pull up your library so that you can see where it says drawing substitution. We really want to see where it says drawing substitution. And it's important now, we're on the first frame, we should see your non-talking mouth. Now when you move to the next frame, and remember you can use comma and period to move through the different frames of your animation. So then I move to frame two in my timeline and it shows me I'm on drawing two and that should correspond to my A mouth not the A sound but the label A we will put onto it and it should say two then I check three make sure that lines up then I check 
four, okay, that lines up. And then I check five, is that lining up? And wait, I think so. There's my A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, so if those line up, then we are ready to put labels on our mouths. And like everything on the computer, there's always a whole bunch of different ways we can go about doing this. Each one of you is going to come up with a way that works better for you. But I am going to point out one thing you absolutely positively cannot ever do if you want this to work. And it will mess everything up and you will have to undo all kinds of things and there will be much gnashing of teeth and tearing of clothes and screaming and hollering and swearing and, and just general malaise and unhappiness. So we don't want to go there. Do not, and I repeat, do not try to rename it by typing in where you see the numbers up here. If you do, it will not work. So don't do it. Just don't be that person who does it. Every year there's always some person, oh, it doesn't apply to me. Yeah, it applies to you. Don't do it. Okay. So if we go back to the beginning, oh yeah, this one's supposed to be then. And it doesn't even matter you know, what frame because one thing you'll realize is by going to drawing substitution, I can, with my artwork showing here, I can just now choose, oh, I want to see this drawing, I want to see this drawing, I want to see no drawing. Okay, we can do that too. So we can scrub through. Drawing substitution is how we're going to, when we create blinking eyes and other alternative drawings for a given layer, maybe for a hand, we'll have different hand shapes for different hand gestures. Maybe your character is obnoxious and flips people off, so you'll need a separate drawing where it's giving people a single finger salute. I don't know. Or it's peaceful, two fingers. Or it's Vulcan and it's doing the split finger uh, wave. I mean, you, you get to figure out what you want. So we don't always do substitutions just on mouths, but mouths and eyes are where it's most common. So now when I look at this mouth here, this is my non-talking, my neutral shaped mouth. If I want to rename this, one thing I can do to do that is I can go down in the timeline, I can right click, and I will see then there's an option under drawings and I can choose rename drawing. I will also notice that there's a, uh, keyboard shortcut there, Command D. So I can use that. I can go to a pull down menu and I can do it up there. There's a bunch of places I can do it. But in this case I'm going to, since I'm here, I might as well use it. I'll just click rename drawing. It pops up this little rename drawing dialog and I type in the name. The names here must be capital letters. Lowercase letters won't work for auto lip syncing. Then you'll have to manually build the mapping connections. That's lame. Don't want to do that. So capital letters, I X. My non-talking mouth is an X. And I hit OK. Boom, done. It should. And apparently I was on the wrong frame. I fixed it. The ending one, it renamed itself to somehow that one to G. So right click on the drawing, rename drawing, or Command D, which is I think easier. Okay, now it's been named X. Now, I could go to the next, just cycle and just stay in frame one and cycle through, or I can click to the next one, go, okay, there's my next one. We know that mouth there, this mouth, it will be not two, but it will be B. Once again, it needs to be capital letters. So I'll hit a B. Okay, now it's capitalized. Now I can move to the next one. This is my C mouth. So with it selected, Command D, type in a C. Man D, this be my D mouth. Oh, my sequence got off here. That was A. I've just botched all my naming today. We'll just try again. That is my neutral mouth, that is X. I'm going to just drag up here until I see what I know it's supposed to be until I find that is not B. It's the MBP sound, so I typed in the wrong thing. That was supposed to be A. So that's A for that one. Now B is the all teeth. 
with a little bit of malice showing. There we go. That is B. The command D. Now B. And then I can go find C, which will be here. That's not D. So the temptation is to highlight up here and try and rename, and that is where it breaks. Always click in the timeline, Command D, and name it down there. Now that is my F mouth, so I'll name that. So if you don't script the naming along the way, then you can just cycle through easily and it behaves a little bit better, but if you screw up along the way, then you have to rename things. This should be my D mouth. So now if I'm lucky, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, X. So if you scrub through up here, you should see the mouse in the order you want them. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, X. And if that is correct and working for you, then you will be ready for the next step of bringing in the sound and setting up the lip sync. Once I have completed this, if you haven't in some recent order, you might want to save. You know, it's just a good practice. Get into that habit. All right, so now I have the face here. I have my mouths. They're named. I have my mouth layer. We need to bring in the sound. So if I go under File, I can choose Import, and then I can choose Sound. Now, one thing about doing this is this is useful for building up the sound reference. One thing that Animate Pro is not great at doing is treating it like a video editor where you have 15 layers of sound that you can precisely and easily align with your visuals. It doesn't work great for that. What we find works better is if you have a soundtrack for your project, you import the soundtrack, which includes your music and your voice and everything, sound effects, and it's all timed out and then you animate to that and then you export the video forget the sound and then stick it into a video editor like Premiere and then fine tune and finesse and put in the final version of your audio that is a more controlling workflow but it is certainly possible to have multiple layers of sound and adjust their timing in Animate Pro it's just not the most convenient at times to do so. So file import sound. Once I've done that it comes up I get to go choose the sound. My sound should be on the desktop where I downloaded it to. Then I'll hit open and we'll see that it dumped the sound into my timeline. Now my sound is you know we can see it's waiting to show more so we need to extend that out so I can see more of the sound. Once that sound is there so the sound has been brought in. I stretch my project out so I can see some more of that sound. And if I want to hear the sound and just hear it, nothing happens because I have not enabled sound for my project. If I click that, then when I hit play, at this point I we can see the sound plays. If I hit the sound icon with an S by it, that stands for scrubbing. So I can scrub the sound to listen for the sound. So when you're trying to animate to an audio track, if you scrub the timing and you don't, and you're like, okay, that's where I need to make something happen, then you can hear it without having to just hit we do have play, stop, play, no stop. It's often much faster to, oh, that's what I'm looking for, and you scrub to that point. So if you don't want scrubbing, turn that off. If you don't want sound, turn that off. We want sound. I want scrubbing right now to complete the demo. Yeah. Sound is now in my project. My artwork is not extended all the way out yet, so I can extend those layers as I see fit. 
So now we extend that out. Now if we look at the mouth layer, we'll see that the mouth layer currently just has the different mouth shapes on it. Doesn't matter what mouth shape it's showing. What matters is the mouth layer has the name drawings. If I go to voice, this is where we're going to do it for real. This is where it gets real. Right click on my sound or sorry, right click in the on the waveform, my bad. And now auto lip sync detection. So I want it to automatically detect lip syncing. Then right click lip sync and choose map lip sync and it pops up this dialog. In this dialog it says source layer, that's my voice sound. If you have multiple sound layers you could choose them which sound you're trying to work with. Destination layer. Well my eyes, I only have one eye so that's not really going to lip sync terribly well and it's not labeled so a double whammy bat. But I can now choose mouth layer and it's going to map the A to A, B to B, C to C. And when you do it this way, you don't have to manually try to line things up. Otherwise, you'd have to put in numbers, or if you actually did full-on names for your drawings, then you'd have to put that in. Huge pain. Much easier. Do it like this. Then you hit OK. And now if you look at my mouth layer, you will see that suddenly it just changed. And if I hit play, at this point I really do have no idea what I'm going to say, even though there was a request, and the magic works. One thing to keep in mind with the mouth and when you're generating the mouth, it's really important so that your artwork and everything lines up, is that the teeth which are attached to the skull. The upper teeth are attached to the skull. The lower teeth are on the jaw, which can go up and down, but the upper teeth are on the skull. As a consequence, they should never be moving up and down, otherwise your mouths will appear to be flying all over the face. So when you draw it, it's important to line it up. The good part is, if you screw it up, all you have to do is grab the select tool and select everything, and then you can move it up or down as you need to to line things up and try to you know build it in alignment to some previous layer it's also possible that you could add a guide or you could just add a layer and on that layer draw a guide so on that layer you could now choose something that you know a color you're not using and I could draw, draw a guide for where I need to be lining up the teeth so that when I'm working on this layer here and if uh, light box, oh, not that, here, that's what I want. If light table's on, it grays it out. So if I'm on the mouth, I can see there's the line I'm lining the teeth up on. Now, I, if I was doing it for real, I'd probably use a little better finesse of a line, make it easier to line it up. But it's important that you get these things lined up. Otherwise, it looks really trashy when your character is talking because the mouth is swimming around on the face and not anchored to it. And because the jaw can move, it's not uncommon when you're doing lip syncing to actually separate the bottom of the face or the whole chin area and include that with the mouth so that it creates the movement of the entire face. If you have a small mouth on a big head, you can get away with not doing it. In this case where the mouth is so close to the bottom of the face, I would probably get a better quality in my animation if I did animate the whole chin with the mouth so that I would have it would look like the whole mouth is opening and we I mean I could do that by just adding to that mouth layer so that when the mouth is opening let's see if we can find like here where it really opens up at this point I could now with the brush can I use the stylus here, but I could now redraw the chin and bring it down so that it shows that we're extending that. Now filling it in there's any number of strategies. You can draw a pencil line or you can just use another color and I could create a mark to 
line things up or I can just use the paintbrush and just whoop, yeah that's the right color and then just fill in the spot that I need as part of it I'm just trying to cover up that line turn off light table we'll see you can see how it lines up so now we get the whole jaw motion going on so when we're doing this it's not I and mean, you can do some of that where there are some more advanced techniques we can use deforms and other things where it causes it we can do essentially kind of like a, where it stretches or morphs the layer but those have a whole nother set of baggage issues associated with them that when you're doing it it can get really wonky uh, they sometimes work well but sometimes oftentimes don't but now we can see how that stretches the chin and because we're doing this all just on these each individual drawing layer it will perpetuate so we see how it now is part of it over here as well so we don't need to listen but we can watch as the chin goes down and now that I've done a little bit of that I feel like it, you know the rest of the face would benefit from that as well as when it opens just a little bit of pulling the chin down would really kind of make for a more complete animation so you can do that in your own as part of the homework now if I want to work on the eyes here right now the eyes are open but if I were to take the eyes and want to create the impression that the character has blinked or that the eyebrows have changed shape as part of that expression we can certainly do that so I'm going to lock the mouth layer unlock the eyes and now at this point I am going to um, create a duplicate drawing so now I've now if I look at my library we'll see that there's two eyes and on this set of eyes I am going to delete most of what's there I want I primarily wanted it so I could get the basic shape to begin with on it and I realize now I probably didn't need that but not paint bucket eraser so what we're going to be doing is creating a line that joins right in there and gets rid of most of what we see across here yeah I, I should have just started over and turned on onion skinning so I'm going to just it'll be faster delete that with onion skinning on we can see where the previous eyes are and now if I draw with my stroke color and go okay eye is closed eye is closed while I'm blinking the eyebrows are going to change a little bit so we can see before now turn that off so we get now a blank now if I want to add some more in, you know, maybe a little bit of that, okay. Hold that for about two seconds, or two frames, and now I can go in the library and go back to the eyes open view. And now if I hit play, we can see the character blinks. Now if that blink is too quick, so now we have blinking going on. Now I have a two frame blink but maybe I want to stretch that out into a three or four so that it's a slow blink and then we watch. And it is something that when you do it if you just change the eyes it's okay but if you change the eyebrows or some other parts as well it really does start to add to the plasticity of your character. It looks to be that much more real instead of oh just the mouth changed or just the eye changed but by tying the eyebrows to that blink we can really see how it starts to make our character have a lot more life as part of it now if I want to blink at some other point I can just switch over to my blinked view then go back over a few frames and now so we can see he must have you know something in his eye because he's blinking a lot while he's talking. And besides 
the blinking, I could also have other expressive eyes. So not just a blank, but I could have where then the eyes look mean or the eyes look happy, any number of opportunities there. So if I end, do an empty drawing, turn on onion skinning so I can see what's there. Let's go at this drawing, be the open eye. Oh, this drawing was supposed to be open, open eye. And now here I want it to be the new empty one. So now if I want to create eyes where starting to pull them down a little bit. We can see what's going on now if I go grab a new color and the white of the eye was and this is where having your layers or your colors labeled is certainly beneficial so then I would know that's the white of the eye and I have blue across here. If I just get a little bit of it then I can use the paint bucket and fill it in. Oh it's not blue in the middle. It's green. Bright green. Which I suppose I could have you just paint bucketed the blue but that's all right. So if you label your colors, it does make it easier to remember or know what they are when you are working with them. If it's painted, then I can just cycle those in as I need. It's kind of dark there. So we can see how adding in the blank, moving the chin, more blank, changing the eyes to a different shape. All of that is useful for adding personality, adding life to your animation.